Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? So, um, well, thanks for being here. So I'm Alessandro Mazzi. I'm uh, head of partnerships and project management manager at uh, Sovereign Initiative, which is a non-for-profit based here in Amsterdam. So welcome to our home. Um, we are a bunch of uh, people, human beings, most of us. Um, we are 12. We have a team made of uh, oper operational people, and kind of half of it is, is technical. And we work at the intersection of uh, ecology, economy, and emerging tech, so what we call now Web3. Um, we're very much inspired by um, technology and the relationship with that could be built between uh, human beings and the rest of the world, of the natural world, and how the, the role that technology can play in um, building a new relationship with the modern human world. So we ask big questions, and one of them is how should we value nature beyond uh, extraction and exploitation? So what we've been doing uh, so far as human beings, we have extracted from nature, and right now at an exponential level that basically is depleting the, the, the soil and what we really depend on. So one of the questions is how can we value nature more from being alive than dead? And I think uh, Bitgreen uh, gave us an example of how we could do it. So carbon markets are a way to do it, but we want to look beyond that. We want to look beyond uh, commo uh, commodity and looking at how can qualitative value, for instance, become a thing. Um, another question is how can we allow nature to take decisions? Um, maybe we should be talking about non-humans because we are nature as well. So how can we allow non-humans to become agents to take decisions f uh, for themselves? So if we want to build a bridge, why, why don't we ask a bird what he wants? Uh, these are the questions that we ask. Um, and what kind of technologies can we build that are in service of nature and not de uh, destroying uh, it? So a way we found that is uh, useful to look at the future is through uh, a triadic process, which starts with art. And with art, I mean anything that is experiential, so anything that is connecting us as selves with other selves. So uh, think of experiences of uh, empathy. For instance, we recently um, concluded a, a competition where we asked um, people, creator, creatives, poets, and any lay person actually, to try to write a piece, a poem, or, or um, a pr in, in, in prose, um, write, to write from the perspective of a non-human, so from a perspective of a plant or an animal of soil, and uh, we rewarded them with uh, NFTs, and the winners of uh, the pieces of the winners will be uh, made as NFTs, and we'll see if that's a way to create value, for instance. One of the feedbacks we got was that by doing that exercise of um, looking through the eyes and looking through the mind of uh, non-humans, there was an empathy created. After that, after those experiences, we've, we engage with another way of knowing, which is intellect, what we usually spend most time doing. So we have a research um, stream uh, led by Andra Leiter, who's one of the founders uh, of Sovereign Initiative and a professor at the University of Amsterdam, who is looking at um, how do we represent nature through technology. And then uh, we have a, a tech uh, stream, um, which is then the doing. So after we have experienced nature, we have experienced this connection and we thought about new models that are regenerative and non-extractive, what kind of technology should we build? So 
we organize hackathons to do that. We invite teams to join our crazy thinking and, and actually to build uh, as an experiment, as an exploration. Um, and we run uh, what we call the Germinator program, which is an incubator uh, that I'm running right now from uh, the best teams that came out of the hackathons around them through a, a process of um, connection with nature, um, reflection about their relationship with the uh, modern human world, and then we help them build uh, through our partnerships um, the, the tech that might be the technology of the future. So if any of you is familiar with the solar punk movement, we very much fit in that sort of realm. So when we're looking at technology, we want technology that connects. Technology has been separating us from, uh, from the world. We look at screens, which are, in some ways, they are natural, but they very much engage only the intellect. So we look at technology that can bring people out of the door and to explore the natural world. Um, we look at technology that values, so that helps people value uh, in non-quantitative ways. And then the technology that helps people care, so helps people to take action, to commit to, to uh, new behaviors, to, um, to protect or restore natural environments. Of course, we, um, we looked now at the Web3 uh, space, and we, we are seeing that there are so, many, so much potential. So this is something I wrote this morning as that of, like a consciousness stream in some way of like things I've been uh, experiencing uh, recently, and I've seen uh, the potential also. The hackathon we just ran was, was very much focused on citizen science and engaging uh, citizens in data collection and incentivizing that uh, data collection, but there was also a lot of um, what is called decentralized uh, uh, science as well as, uh, as almost the same. Um, we looked at, we're looking at self-sovereign nature identity, so with our uh, our partners at Kilt, for instance, we played with the idea of giving an identity to an animal or an entire forest and enabling the, the forest itself to capture the value that it creates, for instance, through the carbon uh, uh, that it sequesters. And then through that value, again, this is, these are ideas that we're playing with, the value that is created, monetary value, can then be distributed to the people that take care of, uh, of that forest. Um, we're not doing this alone, of course. We've got some great partners um, that we're working with, some of which are here. Um, Unique Network with them, they not only are supporting the Germinator program, but um, uh, they've, uh, we've also created a marketplace uh, with them. So uh, we're very uh, excited about what we can develop with that marketplace. So the idea is to the, the value created through the, the NFT marketplace, parts of it goes into a wallet that is owned by nature. Um, Kusama helped us also with, with uh, um, the, the, hack, the hackathon that we run uh, with monetary support, Ocean with both technical and uh, uh, funding. We've killed uh, similarly to uh, Ocean, they gave us uh, support in terms of uh, technology and explaining how their technology worked to the uh, hackathon participants. And finally, Odyssey built the environment where our online hackathons happen, and we are playing with ideas of digital twins and, and creating metaverses for, um, for big ecosystems like uh, the savannah, savannah's ecosystems of forests where um, basically, uh, well, if you're not familiar with the concept of a digital twin, is basically um, a representation, a copy of what is in the physical world uh, represented in a digital world. Um, these are some of our hackathon participants uh, from the February experiments. 
Uh, let me see if Jeroen is here. I'll make him. There he is. And he was also one of the participants uh, in, the, in the hackathon. These are just some screenshots I took of uh, solutions that were built. Sattva, for instance, what they did, they developed a camera that would take automatically pictures of non-humans. So they developed an AI that could recognize if whatever it was that was moving in front of the camera was an animal or a, or a human. And if it was an animal, it would c capture the picture, run it through a, a GAN uh, algorithm, and then basically create an NFT that was sold uh, on a, an open NFT market. And the, the, the value that was uh, captured there would then go to the park where that picture was taken. And that money then can be distributed, for instance, to the people that are taking care of the park. Um, Momenti Notes, which is the one in the middle there, created um, what was a representation of a, of a tree and to basically create um, what they called a fidgetal world. So uh, <laughs> an in-between, and Jeroen can explain it better than me, but like to see how we can make the connection between digital and physical world so that any changes that happen in the physical world are represented in the, in the digital world. Um, so I will play a short movie now, which is it's just three minutes, but it's an after movie of the hackathon. So this is an invitation if any one of you finds it exciting to join our next hackathon, which will be in November, and it will be focused on a project in the global south. I will run you through how our hackathons work after this. The most exciting thing of this hackathon was the, how incredibly collaborative every single team was and how much respect for each other they had. The biggest riddle that we are trying to solve is that economic interests are driving the destruction of the planet with a force and with a power and with a speed that no conservationist project can keep up with. In Web3, you know, we have so many new tools at our hands um, that could completely change the business model of the, um, of the whole conservation space, amplify it and bring much more money inside. There were projects from regenerative finance to governance and DAOs. Uh, we had environmental sensing uh, proposals, NFTs for nature identification and rewardings. We know how difficult it is to, to collect reliable data, to, to get people to support organizations on the ground and to, to verify events, which we think we, we saw from space. Uh, so we thought within this hackathon, we could try to gamify this process. And yeah, what better game to develop than the pirate game? Now around 24 hours, we've been developing an amazing concept on how you can become a pirate which conquers, identifies and plunders interesting landscapes, but not in order to extract value, but actually to contribute value. The hackathon teams were so excited to use the platform already beforehand and then during the weekend they just they loved the interactivity, they loved the randomness of meeting each other and explaining to each other what they were busy with uh, and helping each other. So flying to the space and and you know coding together or ideating on their mirror boards and then flying back to work on their own solutions. It was just freaking awesome. So the Momentum platform and the new features, uh, the social features, made it so easy for teams to find each other, to know where to go, to, to literally just self-organize their weekend experience, basically, and to meet the advisors that we, we brought into, into the space. Some people just jump, jumped in for the first time, and five minutes later, they were flying around. Although it was a competition, it felt like everyone was, was winning at a winning game. <laughs> there, there is a high probability that these teams actually form a company.
And that's where kind of the grander uh, blockchain ecosystem, uh, which has been supporting the Sackathon, like the Kusama Treasury, uh, like the Ocean Protocol and some others. Now we can go back to those uh, treasuries and to those funding mechanisms to continue funding, uh, you know, to apply for grants to fund these projects further. And the same also from Sovereign Nature uh, Initiative. So, um, briefly about the hackathon. So, what, how we, we run them um, is we partner up with uh, what we call a nature steward, which can be an organization or an individual that owns or um, is managing a piece of land that has challenges. Uh, we draft the uh, call to the, for the hackathon together with them based on the challenges they have. And we ask them, are you open to uh, experimenting with Web3 tools to tackle those challenges. And so we started with a project here in Amsterdam called the Koval, which was uh, an old shipyard, very polluted. We're uh, trying to use nature-based solutions to, um, to purify the, the, the soil. And uh, in November, we will do a hackathon in the Global South in Africa. So stay tuned for, for that. And uh, this is a, a quote I just made up this morning, and it's very much like what we're really trying to do, we were, or we're really trying to prove that there is technology, there is thinking models, eco economies that can actually be in service to, to life. And uh, our planet is non-fungible, so its value is uh, beyond any carbon uh, valuation that we are uh, playing with. Um, so these are the ways you can get involved soon. So if you're around Amsterdam in May, we'll have an experimental zone event, which will basically be a celebration of all the uh, solutions that were built during the, the hackathon. And there will be conferences around the topics of what the you know, relationship between man, machine, and nature, uh, uh, Web3 and conservation, uh, art that helps um, you know, bring, again, human and non-human worlds together. Um, we will have VR experiences, so if you're around, it's going to be fun. There's going to be a party as well, so it's worth it. Um, in November, we have the hackathon again, and uh, we're always looking for tech uh, support in-house, but also uh, if any team, any uh, 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 company like, you know, like uh, Unique and wants to partner up with us, uh, please reach out to me. I hope you can see. Oh, that got screwed up. Um, it's my name and SovereignNatureInitiative.com. That's my email. And please uh, get in touch. I would love to, uh, to uh, explore some crazy ideas with you. Thank you for listening. Um, yeah, we got a few minutes for questions if you have any. Thank you. <laughs>